Hi, if you're new to my channel, my name is Julie Maida, and today I'm going to teach you how to paint a watercolor ocean. Um, I'm a licensed artist and designer. I teach licensing and watercolor art on this channel, and I picked a photo who's, um, this is from Unsplash, so we're allowed to use it. The name of the photographer that took this is, I put it in the comments because I'm going to butcher their name and I don't want to do that. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I'm making this video in celebration of the fact that Target has picked up my I Love Hawaii Ocean Art Collection as of um, last week. Um, it is, what is it, uh, August of 2023. Um, but anyway, I'm making this video in celebration of that and let's get to it. So I'm first gonna show you my setup and what I'll be using. I've got a little eight and a half, I'm sorry, eight by six piece of paper. I'm using Osh cold press, which also a lot of people pronounce arches. That's how I pronounced it too until somebody told me it was Osh because it's French, um, which has this washi tape border because I like a clean border. This washi tape is not working. I don't recommend it. <laughs> Whatever brand that is, I wouldn't buy that one again. Um, anyway, I have my colors that I'm going to be using, which is a variation of um, using greens and yellow. Um, Jean Brilliant for the sand, and maybe some sienna and yellow ochre. I love these colors. Holbein is my favorite paint maker, but you can use any brand and any colors that are similar to these. And then I have Prussian Blue, which is one of my very favorite colors. Meridian, um, this cobalt green color, and this gray green in case I want to need some stuff down. But any variation of colors like this will get you where you want to be. Phthalo is also like a good option. Um, I have this for testing out pink colors and consistency before I put them down. Um, several variations of round brushes, like around 10. Around six, these are four and a two. Um, paper towel for dabbing off too much water to color. Clean water and then clean backup water in case my water gets too dirty. Um, this is my butcher tray palette, which is made of metal. It's just my particular favorite one. Um, any kind of palette will do. Um, masking fluid, which you can do this project with or without masking fluid. I'm going to be using this type of masking fluid. This is my favorite brand. I'm going to, I put it in these um, fine liner applicators. That's probably what I'm going to use. Um, you can also use a ruling pen, which is this tool. Actually, I might use this today. And you dip it in and control the, how much comes out with this little knob right here. And you can also use a brush if you create a mixture of like dish soap and water and dip your brush on that first. I wouldn't use like your favorite brush, but you can do that and not ruin your brush. Um, and then I'm just going to take a minute to explain this painting and why I, or this photograph and why I chose it. I chose it because I think it's a learning experience. So I really enjoy these sort of abstracted aerial view ocean um, images for a couple of reasons. One is that I like sort of simplified art that way. I think it's beautiful. But I love to teach things like this because I think it's a really good opportunity to explain what's going on and have somebody that's maybe just starting out get some, um, get a win because this is something that you can paint. Um, this is the name of the photographer that took this picture on Unsplash, by the way. So I've broken this down into um, thirds, three rows um, and three columns. And that's because I'm, this particular photograph uses the rule of thirds for composition. If you graph out a paper like this and divide it up into thirds both ways, and then you drop things on either these intersections or at the center of one, it creates a focal point, which gives your place an eye, it gives a place for your eye to sort of focus on and not be too busy. And this photograph does that well. It also has this really nice movement here with this diagonal line. And this is like an energetic, more dynamic piece of the photograph. And then this is sort of a negative space, peaceful area. And then 
the use of color is good in this too. I mean, oceans are like this in general, beaches, um, with the blue. And then this is just really a very muted orange yellow color. Um, but blue and orange are opposites on the color wheel, which makes them complements and they complement each other, hence the name. Um, but they go really well together. So I'm going to um, make some, uh, take some artistic liberties with the way that I create this, but I just thought this was a good photo to start with. I have put in the comments um, a download of this photo, which again was free on Unsplash, um, an outline for this space, which is actually uh, glued up to like eight and a half by 11 size if you want a bigger painting, but you can use that if you'd like to. You don't need that to paint this, but just an option if you want it. And then also a list of my favorite art supplies are in there if you'd like those as well. So um, let's get started. I'm going to just zoom out a little bit here so you can see. Um, and then I'm just going to sort of estimate. Let's do a sketch here. Um, it's not going to be perfect. I don't want it to be. I'm just going to sort of my. This is not exactly the same size, like the same composition of the painting that I'm doing. So I'm just going to sort of estimate here. Um, this kind of comes out. There's no reason for it to be an exact replica or to be too perfectionistic about it. So that's sort of the line there. And like I said, I drew this out for you if you want um, a guide for kind of where these lines are. But I'll tell you what I'm thinking about because I feel like that is always helpful to learn um, sort of the thought process behind the art is I'm just looking at shapes here. So I see this sort of big shape right here, and then this shape, which is like this rectangle, and then this sort of big, chunkier shape right here. And then this kind of juts out, and then it gets narrow, and then there's this area right here where this ocean kind of comes, or the foam comes out, and this kind of just curves. And then I've got a nice little cutout of more ocean. As you can see, this is just super rough. I'm just looking at the big shapes. There's no reason to get all that detail in there and get concerned with that. I'm actually going to erase this line a little bit because I don't want that to be quite so dark. This is a kneaded eraser, by the way. It's a thumb. It's my favorite thing to lighten lines. Now you can approach this one or two ways. You can either use masking fluid um, or you can just paint paint in and avoid the white areas. Um, I'm going to do a combination of both so that you can see both. I'm going to use this particular device, which has this really nice fine tip. These, if you order these, this is not on my supply list, but you can just get this on Amazon if you just look up fine line applicator for masking fluid. It should pop right up. You need basically no pressure to use this. It just kind of flows right out, so you want to be careful about that. So I'm just going to mask off um, these areas where there's um, like skinnier lines and the ocean, you know, the foam just kind of pulls into the ocean right there. One thing about this and doing things like oceans is that you don't really want to have a pattern in here. You want it to be um, random because that's how nature is. And if you create a really equal organized pattern, your brain is going to see that and it's going to look weird and not natural. So it's okay to just sort of be haphazard about your line making here. So just a lot of like squiggles and shapes. Well, this part over here, this white thicker part, I'm not going to apply masking fluid on the really white thick part. I just don't need to. But also this gives you the option to paint this with or without masking fluid because otherwise you would just paint the shapes, which I'll show you.
know how loud that is in the background, but my air just came on and it sounds super loud to me. So if you heard a weird noise, that's what that was. These areas are going to be where there's less foam and you can see more of this, the sand and the ocean underneath. And this area will be where there's more foam and I'll show you how we're going to tackle that in just a minute. Now masking fluid will create some hard lines so if that's not what you want you may be um, partial to just painting the shapes and the ocean above it. I'm going to use it because I like it. I think it creates this interesting abstract quality to it. And I love abstraction. I'm going to let this dry. Um, you never ever want to paint over a masking fluid that's not totally dry. Um, it will ruin your brushes and ruin your painting. So while that's drying, you can use a hair dryer to dry masking fluid, but you don't want to do it on a hot setting. So if you have a hair dryer, put it on a cold setting and then dry it. Otherwise it might adhere to your paper and pull the paper start with the sand first. I'm going to mix up a variation of these colors. There's a little bit of blue in my brush, so I cool down this color, but I think it's fine. So this is the Jean Brilliant and the Yellow Ochre. That's what these two colors are right here. I have those mixed up. I'm going to wet my paper first. If you wet your paper first, that's going to give you smooth edges. It's not like soaking wet. It's just a little bit. It's a little bit wet, enough to be shiny. But if you pour water on it, not only is it going to really start to buckle, but um, it's really going to dilute your color and it'll be very, very light. All right, so I have a good bit of paint, not a ton of water because this is already wet. And my color is more yellow than what's in this reference photo. I want it to be. I like that variation. I'm just going to keep wetting the paper as I go. And I don't want it to be perfect. I want there to be variations in the lightness and the darkness and the values because that's what red sand is like. You can do this in one good clean wash if you want. But I like to create um, texture. I don't mind when the paint, like when the brush strokes show. This paper has a tendency not to show, show as many brush strokes because it's, it really creates really smooth washes. So I'm just going around this edge. This is where the foam is going to be. And 
So I'm going to leave that white. So back here is lighter. I'm just laying down a really light wash back here. I'm even leaving some white areas in here in the sand for variation. Now that this is wet, I'm going to go in and just drop in some darker areas into the sand. And a lot of times when the ocean like comes in and then pulls back out, it leaves these sort of streaks in the sand. It's never even. So I'm going to do that and I'm also going to create more of a uneven edge here. You can see this has dried a little bit, so the edge isn't quite as soft. You can just add a little bit of water to the edge of it if you want to soften it. And then I'm going to create, I love burnt sienna with like a turquoise color. My water is going to be more turquoise than within this picture in this photo, but there's always going to be a little bit of a shadow along the edge. It's not evident in this photo. Now I'm going to create a little bit more depth because the water has depth, right? It's like got depth from top to bottom and it creates a shadow in the sand. And so the edge of the water is going to be, or I'm sorry, the edge of the sand, it's hard for me to paint and talk at the same time, is going to be a little bit darker right where that water hits the sand. I might go back in when this is dry and hit this area again to create even more of a shadow. See, see how the depth looks. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to create the ocean without the masking fluid. It's basically just shapes. You can see in here, it's kind of difficult to see. Let's see if I can get it. Um, in here, these are just shapes. So they're shapes of the color of the sand. It's They're kind of haphazard. Um, and this is the sand throwing through, showing through the water here. And then in some areas, you have the same thing with the water showing through the foam. So we're going to just Grab some more of the sand color and create those shapes. Again, I'm not touching the masking fluid area yet because that is not dry. So this is how you would create those if you weren't using a masking fluid. You would look at the shapes of the sand and create those. Just try again not to create too much of a pattern. 
It's kind of hard to do, but you just have to be aware of it. They would also have shadow underneath of the water there. All right, now I'm just going to take a hair dryer and dry the masking fluid. Masking fluid doesn't work on all paper. It doesn't have to be cotton. Some papers take masking fluid, some don't. The ones that I have listed in my art supply list all take masking fluid because I like it. I like to use it. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dry this, but I'm going to, again, use the cool setting, not the hot setting, to do that. Okay, this is dry now, and I'm going to show you um, how you create the sand with the masking fluid on there and sort of blending into the water. So I'm mixing the Jean Brilliant and yellow ochre and a tiny bit of the burnt sienna. Probably a little bit darker than I intended it for it to be, but um, I can fix that. My painting is not going to have quite as much white as in this painting because I like those delicate lines. Okay. And then I'm just going to go ahead and mix it. little bit more of this from Sienna and then I'm going to create a shadow so it kind of looks like a continuation there of the color. Darken these areas just a little bit. See I'm not being super precious about it. Again I really like doing these because they're just like relaxing and um, I hope beginners can do these and have a really successful painting. One of the things that I say a lot and I feel like I'm like a broken record is that artistic skills, everybody thinks that or there's like this misnomer that like it's a talent thing and you're just like born with it or you're not born with it and that really is not true. It's something anybody can learn if you just learn how to see and think and see things in shapes and values and think about what's really going on, you can learn the same skill sets. It's just a matter of time and practice, just like learning any other skill set. And I want people to know that because there's so many people that have a desire to be able to do this and they just think, well, I'm not talented, so I can't do that. And that's definitely not true.
so I'm just going to let the paper a bunch here. Not crazy, but enough for it to get, for the paint to want to blend. And I'm using this light turquoise color because I, um, the water is going to be lighter where it's not as deep and it's going to obviously get darker where it's deeper. So I'm um, starting out with just this light color. So you can see I've already mixed up a good bit of this like darker color, but I want more green in there. Just test that color. So that's too probably a little brighter than I want it to be. So I'm gonna need it down just a little bit with this like darker green color. if you can tell on the camera, but that's slightly more muted. Okay. And then I'm just going to let it mix in and do its watercolor thing. I don't know about you, but I find this to be so satisfying to just watch when it does. I'm keeping the edges wet. If you notice, like I lay down the paint there and then I go back in and wet the edge so that I'm not getting hard lines. But by doing that, I'm also creating these blooms. Like if you take paint that's drying and add water to it, it creates these blooms. But I love blooms. So that's the reason I don't just do like a big clean wash. It's because I want to create them as I go. Okay, so if you'll notice, this value is not nearly dark enough. They're like the same value. Um, so this has to be way darker. That's one of the things that makes that image work so well, is that there's like really good contrast. And so I'm going to add more paint and less water to create that much darker. Now waves from above or oceans from above like this, um, they don't really have wave patterns, um, but they do typically have darks and lights. So you, you'll be able to see in the water from above, there'll be like darker areas and lighter areas. So I'm gonna put some of that quality in here um, while it's still wet, because I don't really want hard lines in this one. in there, this ocean, but you can't do that for this purpose. That's not what I'm going for. I often actually really like the hard, hard lines. I work on hot press a good bit for just that reason, but for this tutorial, not so much. So add some salt. Salt creates interesting texture, which is hard to see right now, but you'll see it when it dries. You can add salt or not add salt to your painting, but I love it. Oops. And I'm going to add a little bit more pigment back here. I 
I don't want it to be even. I want it to look like it's sort of streaky and um, the water is moving as variations in its depth. And then over here, I'm going to create a little bit of um, texture. I want to mix burnt sienna. I put a tiny bit of blue in there to mute it or to make it like um, a greenier, like less warm color. And then I'm just going to cover this up, even though that's wet, that's okay. And create, I don't know, green sandy pattern and texture over here. You can also do this, but it's really hard to get um, that haphazard sort of natural organic feeling pattern. And then I'm going to just go in with that same exact muted burnt sienna, or not muted, I'm sorry, cooled down burnt sienna, not muted, I keep saying muted, but I just added uh, Prussian blue to it to make it a little bit bluer. And I'm going to create a little bit more of a shadow. To create a tiny bit more depth, and you can see it start to pop out. What's great about these aerial beach ones is that you can be a complete beginner and make this and have it be really beautiful and you can gift it to people. So, um, you know, the holiday season is coming up soon. Well, at least it is when I'm making this video. It's um, almost September and you can make a series of them you know, two or three of them for the beach person in your life and gift it to them. And art is such a personal, wonderful gift. So the reason I'm doing this is because I'm also creating depth inside of these areas where the sand is showing. And just like variation nothing is ever going to just be the same exact value. There's going to be differences. There's not a ton of water on my brush, I'm just adding some darker areas so it's not on the same. And I'm going to blend in that area where the water is meeting the sand here. Okay, and you can see what the salt's doing. It's creating all this interesting texture. All right, I am going to dry this again and then I will pull it apart and it will be finished. This is now dry. I'm going to remove the mask that's over the tape um, and the salt. You never ever, under any circumstances, want to remove salt or mask fluid when your paper is still wet. It will rip your paper. So I'll just take this off first. There's a little border. 
And you can peel this off with an eraser. You can peel it using an eraser, use your finger. I usually just use my finger. You can also, if you want to soften it, you can use um, white gouache or bleed proof ink to soften some of the white areas and the foam if you prefer not to have this sort of graphic look to it. It depends on what you want. Here, I'll show you that too. This is um, Dr. Phil Morton's bleed proof white. I add water to mine to water it down a little bit. Um, and I'm just going to grab some of it and actually put it on my picture tray. Now, people will tell you that you're never supposed to use white and watercolor and just roll into the white paper. Technically, that's true, but um, I don't care. <laughs> it's my painting and I'm going to do what I want. And I think that if you're making your own art, then you should do what you want to do with it. So I'm going to show you if you want to sort of blend this a little bit and make it like a softer transition. You could do that. And this is how I would do that. So I'm going to blend it with this blue. a good bit of water on my brush. So that way you bounce your piece back on it. And you can certainly do that too when you're blending those lines out a little bit. So I'll show you. Again, if you see what I'm doing with my brush, I'm not being super perfectionistic. The term for this is something scumbling. Um, you don't want to, that's not what nature looks like, so let yourself be free. yourself in those areas if you want to. Again, it just depends on what you want. I'm actually really enjoying this white. You can also, I'm going to just keep going because why not, <laughs> if you want to have um, your water be a little bit more tonal, like not just a flat white, you could take a super, super light wash of blue and green, like mix those together, something that's kind of grayed down looking. See, I'm going to test it out. 
And then you can go back into the water because the water is not necessarily a flat light and create just a little bit more depth. There's like a variation of light and all gray and color in that water. And that will give your water even more depth. I don't know if you can see that well. Again, I'm not being super precious with, precious with it. Just sort of adding some areas where there might be color in there, and there might be a little bit of a shadow in there. So yeah, I hope this has been helpful. I love teaching this stuff. If you leave a comment for me about other stuff that you want to learn, um, I only have the bandwidth to make about one of these videos a month because they're very time consuming, but I really, really love teaching this stuff and encouraging people in the stuff that they want to do and learn. Um, it also really helps me with comments and likes. The reason that somebody's always asking me to subscribe to their YouTube channel is because it helps our SEO. So. That's great if you do that. Um, but if not, I'm genuinely interested in helping you. So please tell me what you want to learn about and I'm happy to share the things that I know with you and help you hopefully with your own success. Thank you for painting with me 